Hi everyone, I am Dr. Lipanes Prasad. I am from PK Das Medical College. Today I am going to talk about the ventilation. Today's topic will be covering the non-invasive ventilation involving the CPAP as well as the BiPAP. The non-invasive ventilation is a device which is used to deliver the oxygen support via a face mask and therefore eliminating a endotracheal airway or the invasive procedure in a patient. An IV achieves a comparatively the same physiological benefits as a conventional mechanical ventilation by reducing the work of breathing and improving the gaseous exchange within the lungs. Non-invasive ventilators, it usually creates a positive airway pressure so that there is a pressure outside the lung is always higher than the what is present within the lungs so there will be a uh, air will be forced into the lungs in a downward gradient method and hence there will be ventilation occurring across the lungs since the effort of the patient is significantly reduced and there is an increase in the residual capacity within the lung the actual amount of air or the oxygen available for the ventilation will be higher. We will first understand a brief anatomy of the lungs. On the right side we have upper lobe and a middle lobe which is actually divided by a horizontal fissure and the middle lobe and the right, right lower lobe is being separated by an oblique fissure. On the left hand side we have two lobes that is upper and lower lobe. Both the lobes have been separated by a oblique fissure. Trachea divides into right and left bronchus and, and furthermore the respiratory unit has been um, divided and the, there is an alveolar sac which consists of an multiple numbers of alveoli where the ventilation occurs. CPAP is one of the non-invasive ventilation technique and it is the most basic level of ventilation support which provides a constant fixed positive pressure throughout the inspiration and expiration. It causes the airways to remain open and reduces the work of breathing, increases the higher degree of inspired oxygen than the other types of oxygen mask available in the hospital. In our hospital, we use a high flow generated oxygen flow system hence achieving greater efficiency with CPAP for indicated patients. If these ventilations are being done by a mechanical ventilator or a dedicated mechanical ventilator, definitely the CPAP efficiency would be 100% better than the normal smaller machines. Some machines show the settings as CPAP or spontaneous CPAP on their respective screens. But this should not be confused with any other boards. Uh, definitely the universal way to identify is CPAP writing on any modes. When do we use a CPAP? A patient who is having an hypoxemia without any major clinical illnesses, small atelectasis or partial lobe collapse, post-op ribcage surgery to stabilize cerebral fractures, congestive heart failure, cardiogenic pulmonary edema, obstructive sleep apnea, mild to moderate pneumonia with hypoxemia and for infants who require nasal CPAP. BiPAP usually is a trade name but as the name suggests it provides a differing airway pressure. It's a variable kind of airway pressure delivery system which depends upon the inspiration and expiration of the patient. Positive inspiratory pressure or the IPAP is the one which gives ventilation. IPAP is the one which gives the ventilation. EPAP is the one which recruits the underventilated or collapsed alveoli. So IPAP plus EPAP completes the ventilation parameters in a patient. Hence, BiPAP is always superior to a CPAP device. When do we use a BiPAP? In case of type 2 respiratory failure, if the COPD shows a respiratory acidosis when the pH is lesser than 7.2 and there is increased amount of breath being taken by the patient due to ventilator failure and after a tracheal extubation or a tracheal intubation weaning process, we tend to use a BiPAP or a non-invasive ventilation BiPAP mode. 
negative pressure ventilation were done in the olden days wherein uh, iron lung chamber used to be used it was in the first half of 20th century but nowadays we are not using it uh, wherein it is used to lower the pressures of surrounding thorax by creating a negative pressure across the thorax from a chamber contraindication of niv is very important a patient who is comatose or if there is a untrained pneumothorax a patient who is having frank hemoptysis and hematemesis should not be exposed to an niv facial injuries nasal bleed or the epistaxis and if a patient is having a raised icp the intracranial pressure or intracerebral bleed the patient should not be on an niv active tuberculosis or active communicable diseases lung abscesses these infective causes should not be allowed for an niv few precautions have to be taken while doing an niv for a patient watch for pneumothorax and emphysematous bullet rupture if there is a poor compliance from the patient definitely you have to reeducate the patient and restart the niv multi organ dysfunction hemodynamic instability if there is a overt mask leakage or uh, if there is a respiratory failure and it is not been corrected initially with an niv should make us precautions and we should be planning for a mechanical ventilation whenever it's needed how to set up an niv first the staff has to familiarize with the equipment and understand its basic setting blood gas analysis has to be done before initiating an niv introduce the system to the patient and with the systemic approach and do a pre counseling so that the patient is not agitated with the presence of a mask and a positive pressure being thrown onto his face niv contraindications must be ruled out before application of the niv system parts of a bipap a machine or the airway pressure generator with or without humidifier hepa or antiparticulate filter the smooth bore tubing the exhalation port the face mask spacer and the head gear for securing the mask oximeter or the sensor for the integral recordings might be seen in few advanced bipap machines when attaching machine to the patient introduce the device to the patient and try to reduce the claustrophobic condition as much as possible ensure the proper mask size is been attached and attach the mask without a ventilator connection initially and ask the patient to breathe through the mask without the tubings connected second connect the ventilator tubings to the mask and allow the patient to feel the breathing mechanism of the ventilator and slowly start adjusting the settings on the ventilator according to the comfort of the patient constant feedback from the patient about discomfort and breathing difficulty in regard to the machine shows us the good rapport with the staff and we have to address the same problems and try to maneuver and adjust the settings on to the bipap or cpap machines to give a comfortable breathing pattern protocol to start a bipap start the bipap in an alert patient allow the patient to self apply the mask if possible start with 2 to 3 cm of inspiratory and repressure if the oxygenation is adequate the expiratory pressure may be started at zero gradually increase the inspiratory pressure that is ipap above epap to increase the tidal volume gradually increase the expiratory uh, positive airway pressure to maintain an oxygenation within the lung epap is also increased to reduce the preload and afterload as seen in cardiogenic pulmonary edema ipap to be started at 10 to 15 cm of water the maximum set pressures of an ipap should be from 20 to 25 not beyond that 
IPAP, if it is greater than 20 cm, will definitely cause a gastric distension. There will be a risk of aspiration and decreased diaphragmatic extrusion. Hence, reducing the ventilation from the patient. Persistent hypercapnia increase the IPAP in 2 cm of water and increment to maximum 20 to 25 cm of water but with precautions. Keep EPAP unchanged till we achieve a target tidal volume. Titrate the tidal volumes to maximum 6 to 8 ml per kg. Predict new minute ventilation that is the tidal volume into respiratory rate. The minute volume or the minute ventilation the new value should be calculated with the PaCO2 level of the present ABG and PaCO2 the target what we are planning to achieve into the minute ventilation at the present current settings. EPAP should be started at 4 to 5 centimeters of water and maximum up to 10 to 15 centimeters of water. Persistent hypoxemia increase both IPAP and EPAP in increase increments of 2 cm of water. Both IPAP and EPAP must be increased to maintain a targeted tidal volume. In cardiogenic pulmonary edema, increase the expiratory pressure in a tandem with the inspiratory pressure to reduce the preload and afterload. FiO2 must be lowest possible as to maintain SpO2 greater than 91%. But the scenario can vary according to the patient. It is usually the patient specific and vary in different scenarios and different conditions. So hence it's the clinicians to decide on how much should be done EPAP and an IPAP.